Alice and welcome to Whistle Bear. Whistle Bear is our family farm here in North Northumberland in the UK and here we farm Angora goats for their mohair and Wensleydale sheep for their luscious long wool. This is the very first episode of our Whistle Bear blog and we are going to be showing you a bit about how we farm here and the animals and we're also going to be talking about the yarn that we produce. If you would like to find out more about us, you can find us as Whistlebear on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Ravelry and YouTube. Or you can look at our website which is whistlebear.co.uk. In this, our very first episode, we are going to be focusing on kidding because it's almost Easter and we've got little kids springing about all over the place. We're also going to introduce you to our Yarns Around Northumberland feature. Each month we go to a different um, famous site in Northumberland and we introduce you to that and we show you a pattern related. Um, finally, we're going to look at what we've been knitting and what we're going to knit. This month we've decided to depart slightly from our usual yarns around Northumberland format. Um, generally speaking we would visit somewhere very special um, and show you part of our beautiful county. However this month because it's kidding we thought that actually probably the most special place is here because we have got some very very sweet little kids in the shed and some of them are only a day or two old and they are so playful and so lovely that we thought we would show you them. We do have a pattern though. This month's pattern is Fortnight by Jared Flood of Brooklyn Tweed. Um, we've knitted it in our um, Yevering Bell double knit. We held two ends together in order to get the tension specified on the pattern. I chose to do a hat this month for several reasons. Uh, one is because we're kidding and while spring has sprung here in Northumberland and it's been really beautiful and sunny the last few days, it's pretty cold in the middle of the night and I have to go and check the kidding shed regularly through the night just in case somebody decides that that's the ideal time to have a baby. Um, so I need a nice woolly hat to wear. Also, with everything I knit at the moment, I'm trying to learn a new skill because I'm quite a novice knitter, in fact, and I absolutely love it, so I want to be able to do lots of different things. And this hat, hopefully you can see, has some very pretty little cables coming up to the crown, and I have never done classic cabling like this, so I thought it was an ideal pattern to get to grips with a cabling needle. And I've really enjoyed it, and I'm really pleased with the hat. It's, uh, it's soft, it's snuggly, it's um, guard stitch round the brim, so it clings onto my head really well, because actually Whistle Bear is not called Whistle Bear for nothing. It is called Whistle Bear because the wind blows so hard, basically if it's not nailed down, it's heading out to Holy Island. Um, so I need a hat that stays on my head. I chose to knit my Fortnite hat in one of our long-standing and very popular colours called Ethelberg's Passion one of my favourites. Um, but I also think it would actually be very pretty in a variegated yarn. So we've done this one called Icy Spring. Here are our beautiful Angora goats. In this shed we have our adult goats, some of whom have kidded already as you can see and others like these three ladies are still waiting and looking quite fed up they are too. As well as producing kids every year all these girls will give us between four and seven kilos of mohair. Given how prolific they are it's not that surprising that sometimes we have to help with the babies. Now this is one of our principal goat sheds. Uh, as you can see there are a number of angoras behind me. Um, all the ladies that you can see behind me are yet to kid. Um, they are, we're, we're about 50% through kidding now, I think. Um, so there's some girls here and some girls across the way that haven't had their kids yet. Hopefully one of them might come a bit closer in a minute and you'll get to see them. 
And that little squawk was one of the newborn kids that are behind the camera at the moment. What they do is they, they live in groups like this all the year round and um, in a few weeks time we'll open the small doors from this building and they will be able to walk from here out into various different fields depending on which gates we have open. Um, through the winter they are shut in this shed because goats are not like sheep, they don't have any lanolin in their coats so when it rains they get wet just the same way as we do and they get cold and miserable and they hate it. So um, they will always have access to housing at all times of year and in the depths of winter we actually shut them in here. Um, I'm going to come up. Come on, sweetheart. No, I'm not sure they're very keen on the camera. They haven't seen a camera before, or it's not one that I sit talking to anyway. <laughs> Come on, girl. Who's going to say hello? Who's going to say hello? Never mind. Um, when they show signs that they are going to give birth, I move them into one of the 15 or so individual pens I've got here. And all those pens are always prepared so they have a thick bed of pine shavings and they have a hay net and a bucket of water and they have their own little space so when they're showing signs of kidding I put them in a pen by themselves and I try very much just to leave them alone and most of the goats manage to produce their kids clean them up and get them feeding with no intervention from me I'm always there though, I've always got an eye on them and if they need help, of course they get help. Uh, this here is a very special pen that we call HDU, that's the High Dependency Unit. As you can see we have made sure the walls are completely draft proof and we have this big radiant heater up here that keeps it very very warm and it has a nice thick bed of um, wood shavings. Uh, the shavings that we use are 100% pine because pine is naturally antibacterial and all the goats in here are little kids who need a little bit of extra help like this little chap here. Uh, this little chap he is a triplet he has got two much bigger brothers and uh, Goats only have two teeth, so when a goat has triplets, you have to make sure that all the kids get their share of milk. And while this little chap is a real trier, as you can see, he's keen to suck absolutely anything, including my finger, his two brothers outweigh him probably threefold, so he wasn't getting any milk at all. So we brought him into here, into HDU, where he's kept warm and snug and we feed him with a bottle don't we yeah he's doing really really well partly because when we bottle feed kids here we only feed them with a hundred percent natural goat's milk and in order to have that goat's milk we've actually got a small herd total of four dairy goats and i milk them twice a day in order to have milk for these little guys and of course they have milk for us in the house because it is delicious, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I'm delighted to say that generally speaking, the little goats that come here to HDU do really, really well. And of course, they stay very friendly forever. There's nothing like a bottle-fed kid to give you a lovely, friendly goat. Hey, what about you? Are you all right down there? He's a good boy. Only boys in HDU so far this year. But uh, that could easily change yet. We've still got oh, about half of the dough still to kid. Now, here we have the most recent occupant oops, come here, of HDU. This little boy was born yesterday. And he is possibly the smallest surviving kid I have ever seen. Um, his mum is very, very sweet. 
but she has got no milk at all. Her udder has not developed in any form. Um, so we had to take him away to feed him right from the outset. Fortunately, I had some colostrum in the freezer that had been milked from another goat who had a lot. Um, so he was able to have his colostrum after he was born and now he's having fresh goat milk just like the others and you're tickling my fingers. <laughs> you stop it. Um, so I, I have to say yesterday I was very worried about this little kid. I didn't think he really stood a chance but he has amazed us all with his resilience and um, his just efforts to survive and he's doing really really well. Very proud of him. Very proud of him. Come on little chap. Here you are. He hasn't entirely mastered opening his mouth, so I have to help him a bit. There we are. But I don't know whether the camera can see. He's sucking. That's my thumb. Yes, that's my thumb. That's no good at all. I know, I know. It's very hard because it's very easy actually to overfeed them because once they get the hang of the bottle, they become very enthusiastic and uh, quite competitive as well if you've got multiple kids. Um, so I have to be very strict as to how much they're allowed to have. As you can see, these two that have been fed have got very round fat tummies. So they have definitely had enough for the time being. Now, how are you doing little man? I'll give you a little bit more. A little bit more. Come on, open up. That's it. Good boy. There's a good boy. Stop eating my fingers. All right. Now that might well be enough for him because he's so little. He's only got a little tiny tummy. How are you doing? There you are, little man. Some of the slightly older kids, this little girl is about two and a half weeks old and this little boy is about two weeks old, they get very efficient at taking their bottles. In fact, they can get very pushy about taking their bottles. Come on, little man. <laughs> Somebody's eating me from behind. So, these two are getting most of one of these bottles about um, four times a day. So this is their lunchtime bottle. Neither of these are orphans. This little boy on the left, his mum unfortunately has got a touch of mastitis and so is not very keen to feed him. So I'm just helping her out a bit. And this little girl on the right, she is a twin. And uh, her mum is quite young and just doesn't have a great deal of milk. So she's finding it easier to come and get milk from me, although she could get some milk from her mum. Now, as you can see, when I try to stop from her mum, they're not very pleased. No, that's not yours. That's not yours. No, that's his. That's his. Yes. Well done. Okay, and that's their lunch. What's off the needles? Well, I am very proud this month because I have completed my very first successful jumper. This is Il Grand Favorito by Isabel Kramer. I got the pattern from Ravelry and I've knitted it in um, our Yevering Bell Aran in Rockpool's Edge, held together with our four ply in all ship shape. It's a lovely knit, it's top down, it's all in one piece, knitted in the round, um, with raglan sleeves, as you can see, and short rows at the back, at the bottom. The short rows at the back give this lovely asymmetric hemline, so it's a bit higher at the front than it is at the back. Absolutely perfect if, like me, you like a nice, long, snuggly jumper. Um, I really, I'm really so pleased with this jumper. I generally wear it with my jeans. It's just casual at home. It's soft, it's warm. I really love it. 
So what are we going to knit next? Well, uh, recently lovely Sarah from Woolly Originals in Edinburgh has knitted two Nook jerseys. Nook from Lane Magazine by Yona Hitala. Not sure how to pronounce that, hope I've got that right. But it's a beautiful pattern anyway. And um, Sarah was wearing them at Edinburgh Yarn Festival and I thought they were gorgeous. She had knitted them out of our Yevering Bell double knit. So I thought I would do one too. And actually, lovely Tess, who comes and helps with all things woolly here at Whistlebear, she's also going to knit one. Very different colourways though. Tess is going to knit hers from three skeins of our double knit in chainmail. Brilliant colour because you can wear chainmail with absolutely anything. I, meanwhile, I've obviously got a bit of a pink thing going on because I'm going to knit mine out of joyful. So one extreme to the other, I think. So we're coming to the end of our blog now. I do hope you've enjoyed seeing a little bit of Whistle Bear and a little bit of our knitting. If you happen to be in Northumberland and you would like to visit us, the studio here is open on Wednesdays and Fridays or any other day. Um, if you want to give me a ring, I'm sure we can arrange something. One last thing I nearly forgot. Um, we have been showing you footage of various little kids. Um, all of our Angora goats here are pedigree, so we register all our female young stock. Um, not all the males go into breeding, so we don't register all the males. However, all the girls have to have a name to be registered in. Our prefix is Sunshine, so they're all called Sunshine something. And um, the system that we have here is that we use a different letter for each year. So this year, all of our female kids' names must begin with an E. Now one or two have already got a name. We have Ethel. She was the little girl that I was bottle feeding, the one who's two and a half weeks old. We also have Edna and Eileen. You haven't met them yet because they are actually the daughters of our dairy goats. So we'll be seeing those uh, in another episode. Um, but if anybody would like to suggest some kid names, all beginning with an E, please put them in the comments below. Because what I'd love to do is to choose three or four of the little girls and we'll name them and we can follow them um, over the weeks to come. And you can see them grow and see what their life is like here at Whistle Bear. So please, some names below, that would be really great. We will be filming more episodes of our uh, adventures here at Whistle Bear. So uh, if you would like to be the first to know about them, go on over to YouTube and find us, Whistle Bear, and subscribe to our channel.